Hi, this is Paula Asher at Columbia Gorge Community College, and I'd like to talk about what works well in delivering online classes in the online portion of hybrid classes. I talked to a group of CGCC faculty who've had a high student success rate in their online classes, higher in fact than the average face-to-face -face classes. When I contacted them for advice, their responses seemed to group themselves into three categories. One, attention to week one, two, rapid feedback to students, and three, clear course design. So let's take a look at the attention needed in week one. This first point, answer student questions daily, is also a part of the CGCC requirements for teaching online and hybrid classes. Here are all the requirements for online delivery. For this video, number five is particularly relevant. Respond in a timely manner to questions regarding the course or learning materials within a 48-hour period on weekdays and daily during the first week of term. And before we look a little deeper into other first week strategies, this CGCC policy is worth noting as well, and it's posted in every schedule of classes. Students must log in on the first day of the term and show some activity by Wednesday of the first week or risk being dropped from an online class as a no-show. These two things that students need to do, that is signing in on the first day and showing activity by Wednesday, are important to note in trying to distinguish students who will succeed in your class. Okay, so back to instructor advice about the first week. The Wednesday student deadline for activity that I just mentioned is related to the second two items here. An assignment due by midweek. Instructors who wrote to me about their success stories felt that this assignment needs to be substantial and not just a forum posting. Here are some ideas for this midweek assignment from Andrea and Kristen Kane. By the way, Andrea wrote that she avoids basing her assignments on the textbook so that not having a book is at that point is not a barrier. Andrea might assign readings or videos to students and then ask them to reflect on them as journal entries. One example is the purpose of coaching and feedback in the writing process, which helps students develop their craft as writers. And another example is the important concepts of plagiarism. By the way, if you haven't used journal assignments before in Moodle, the best tool to use is the online text activity. Andrea also wrote that she may give a quiz, for example, on using citations and writing. Kristen likes to use scavenger hunts and a quiz on the syllabus to help students orient to the course. And the third point is to drop no-shows by midnight on Thursday. Let's take a closer look at that. We want to drop no-shows by midnight on Thursday for three reasons. One is to decrease student debt. It's really better for students not to take a class than to end up with failure, debt, and demoralization. A second reason to drop no-shows is to safeguard against financial aid fraud. This is especially important because students receive checks in the second week of classes. Financial aid fraud can run the gamut from students who initially feel they're ready for college but are really not, to so-called fraud rings who enroll fake students. The third point is to conserve instructor workload. Even though no-show students may may not be present throughout the term, the instructor still needs to determine a grade, and it's no fun to give Fs. It's better to spend your time on other students. And lastly, don't forget that it's no problem for student services to add students back in your class if things change. Here is an instructor's perspective. She enforces the no-show drop policy 100%. Andrea wrote to say, I have an assignment due by Wednesday at 11.55 p.m. If they haven't completed it or at least contacted me explaining why they haven't participated, they get dropped. The second strategy we're going to look at is rapid feedback to students. Highly successful online instructors wrote to me to say that rapid feedback to students is crucial. They respond to students in 24 hours or less and on weekends. They use an efficient method to receive messages. They use multiple modes of communication. Some of them uh, that they mentioned were Moodle messaging, email, phone calls, texting. And they also announce unavailability in advance. So if they're going to be gone for a day or two, they let students know so students don't feel like they're you know, they're not getting back to them and they're just gone for a, a set period of time. So here are some things that instructors wrote about getting back to students. Andrea Ware wrote, my email comes directly to my phone and my response time is most often within the hour, if not minutes. Rhonda Hull wrote, they text me a lot for questions or clarity and that is instant feedback that I see this generation needs. And Linda Hewitt wrote, answering email often, I know it's a 48 hour policy, but that is too long for students to wait for a reply. I try for a few hours at most. 
These strategies by CGCC instructors are also recognized at other community colleges in Oregon. For example, here's a recent survey result from our colleagues at Chemeketa Community College. You can see how important a strong instructor presence is in online classes. When you reach out to students directly, it makes a big difference in their success. The third strategy is clear course design. At CGCC, we have a strong program in course design through Quality Matters. These are some important additional factors that are related and complement these standards. A weekly set of requirements. You may, example, have a list of these in your syllabus, but it's worthwhile to repost them in each weekly module so students are clear about your expectations. Instructors use video to introduce the class and explain course mechanics. Also, they deliver lectures via embedded videos. There are about a thousand examples of instructional videos produced by CGCC instructors on the college YouTube site. Let me take you on a quick tour. If you go to the college website and then scroll down, there's a link to the YouTube site here. If you click on the playlist, you get an idea of the subject matters available. Most are screen capture videos like the one you're watching now, and others are produced using camera, lights, microphones, etc. at the CGCC faculty video camp held every summer. If you'd like more information about producing videos, please visit the video production page on the college website and contact me for help. The next item is navigation and design regarding upcoming work. I often hear complaints from students if the instructor restricts them from accessing resources or activities in the upcoming weeks. Students may take an online class because of time restrictions in their lives, like jobs and children, so being able to work ahead can help them succeed. On the other hand, there are successful online instructors who do not have every week open from the beginning. But if your course design does let you make all the resources and activities available to students, please do open them up. You can set individual activities to close when appropriate, so the course is not self-paced. Another technique used by instructor Kristen Kane is to restrict access settings of the activity to make availability based on completion of a previous assignment. Using a course design where you're opening resources and activities manually during the term needs careful attention. So if it is important in your course design to open resources and activities during the term manually, please make sure that the following are true. Have an outline of each week's assignment in the syllabus so students can anticipate and plan ahead. Of course, it's important to be clear about when things will open and be punctual or early every time in making them available. Many students do homework over the weekend, so it would be supportive to give them weekend access, even if that means the previous week's assignments have not yet closed. And the last item for clear course design, please have a strong policy in your syllabus and commitment on late assignments. Please contact me to discuss anything from this video or other topics to assist you in delivering engaging, high-quality courses to students.